Um, we might give it a couple of minutes because I can see there are lots of people beginning to log on, which is great. Um, cool. We can take up to 500. <laughs> <laughs> I love that positive thinking. Well done, Dave. Good for you. Uh, is that all? We can take up to 500. So um, anyway, listen, I'll, I'll start off. Uh, we've certainly got plenty of people already attending. So um, really is just to say welcome to the second um, podcast, which, as many of you will have noticed, is only about three weeks after the last podcast. Um, but actually, there's been plenty going on and we've had plenty of questions. And um, you will see that um, Peter is very kindly, assuming he's on that side and not that side, <laughs> uh, he's very kindly uh, agreed to come along again. Uh, Peter, as you may be aware, is a non-exec director of um, Fuber, but has got very involved with me in the day-to-day -day sort of talking to potential new clients. Um, and uh, as many of you don't know, he's a um, interesting person in the property industry in that he was managing director of Foxton's um, ah. and uh, bought Marsh and Parsons and then sold Marsh and Parsons. So he's very experienced in the property game. So it's really useful to have him along. Uh, last time, I think I did a bit too much talking. We've only got Peter ready for about half an hour before he goes. So um, we had some questions which were sent in to us before, but just in terms of the property industry uh, related questions, I think everyone always has an interest in what is happening in the property market. And certainly one of the questions we had in from a gentleman called Michael. Uh, do you have any concerns over the property industry with the share price jobs, drops in established players? Not the least of which were your old firm Foxton's, which have gone from sort of yep. 250p to about 50p. Uh, so do you have any concerns over the property industry with share price drops? What do you think, Peter? Well, concerns and excitements, they're two sides, sides of the same coin, aren't they? I think there's massive opportunity there um, for them to, especially Foxton's, I think, who won't be split up or, or sold in my in my view, still worth 167 million quid. So uh, whilst they've dropped from a billion, they haven't dropped from 3 billion to 37 million, which I gather Countrywide were worth nearly 3 billion at one stage. But Countrywide especially, um, when I saw the, the share price drop to 14.5p, I thought, wow, that might be a buying opportunity. Thank God I didn't because it's still languishing around that level, which says to me that potentially there is a breakup there and uh, with they have got some great brands they didn't do a prudential of the 80s which just get rid of all the, the amazing brands and call it prudential property services that would have been even more catastrophic but um, in terms of opportunity there I think there's I think there's great opportunity for um, maybe online players but I think more especially um, uh, uh, online and traditional which most estate agents are these days um, to um, have a have a have some fun but you don't think it sort of signifies the end of the high street estate agents running like yeah. that? Definitely not. No, 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 no. I mean, I think on online has a big, big part to play, as, as we know and as we've seen. But frankly, we're, it's only 7% of the market. 93% is still traditional. I think traditional will have to up their game. And I think uh, some of the ones that don't will go out of business. I, I think that's just plain as well. Plain we, as we were having the discussion earlier, weren't we, um, in that so many estate agents are very much um, non-technical, very small. Mm. Uh, a lot of them are owned by, for want of that expression, middle-aged people like like you and me, probably, probably single men who've owned them for a very long time. These are businesses which don't necessarily want to invest in prop tech no. because they don't know which way to go with prop tech. They think I don't understand it. They've got no succession planning. They might get a little bit of money back from their rental book. Um, but this is probably a very large number of people. This is probably 20 or 30 percent of estate agents out there. Yeah. These very small non-techie single businesses, which are literally running down. So yeah. I think a lot of people say, ooh, 30 percent of the industry is going to disappear in the next five years. I think they would have done anyway, actually. I think a lot of these people are, um, you know, they, a lot of these business owners don't have a, um, a uh, follow on policy. They don't have a, um, a succession policy. So. Um, I think that's I mean, healthy. Sorry, go on, Peter. What? I think that's healthy. I think, you know, part of the problem in the, in the 2008 plus recession was that not enough went to the wall. Uh, that sounds really harsh, but, you know, there's a few zombie companies that really shouldn't be around. And they shouldn't be trading still. They're just treading water. Um, and I think um, in, in terms of what's happening at the moment with some of the very big players, I think they're going to have to change or change or die or, or certainly split up. I would, I would bet that Countrywide splits up. 
Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, Megan asked a question, if you were looking for an investment, would you consider buy to let anymore? Uh, yeah, I would. Um, I think you've got to be very careful on, on how much you finance it, obviously. Um, but frankly, you are getting you know, 1% in the bank, maybe 1.5%. Um, I think you've got to be careful what you buy. There's a story today about uh, central London property prices in Kenton Chelsea coming down 10% in June, uh, year on year. Uh, prices in, in London, which, as I've said before, is my manner. I know London. I can't say for the, speak for the rest of the country, but prices have definitely come down. Um, and I think that in view, uh, you know, what do they say? They say uh, sell when people are greedy and buy when they're fearful. Um, I think that Warren Buffett did anyway. I think um, whether it is whether it is at the bottom, I'm not quite sure, and, and perhaps stamp duty, but any change to that will have a have a, a, a play on that. But I, I I do definitely think yes, I would be buying property at the moment, uh, certainly for its for its income, and secondly because I I do think with the lack of space we have in this country and the fact that we're not building any more houses, the classic supply and demand property is not going to fall forever. Uh, when you buy, when you step in, I don't know, but I would guess it's not far away. Yeah, I mean, I would actually say in the entire time that I've worked in the London property market, which is a very long time, um, <laughs> since the 70s, I, would, I really would have to say that I think this is one of the best times to buy property I've ever seen. I just think that, that those who have to sell will sell Absolutely. at a low price because they're not going to sell otherwise. You can borrow if you need to at very, very low rates. Um, and I think that <clears throat> there is so much negativity around about. Yeah. I don't. I don't actually think. I, I, I mean, I'm only going to say it once. Brexit. I don't think that's got anything to do with with why things have got very difficult in central London. I think the reason central London has got the way it is is because of stamp duty. Mm. Um, Thomas asked a question about stamp duty in the market. You know, do we need stamp duty cuts? I get so angry. And if you look on Twitter, LinkedIn, I've put a couple of videos up saying how angry I am that no one no one seems to understand the government least that the London property market is unique in that people move it, someone doesn't move from Fulham to Chelsea because um, because they want they, they need to go and live in Chelsea they move because they want to tell their mates that they live in Chelsea now I know that sounds daft to people who are watching this who live way outside London and the southeast and don't understand but London produces such a huge amount of money for the economy and people living in London. If you make London look like an unattractive place, people don't want to come and live here. And at the moment, moving into a place in London is so expensive. If you're if you're buying a place, I mean, it's difficult to give examples that don't sound stupid. But, you know, if you're buying a place, sort of <laughs> they do. Pounds, you're paying hundreds of thousands of pounds in stamp duty. And if people at the top end of the market stop moving, it has an effect all the way down in London. And people just don't grasp that particularly the government, so it does drive me absolutely mental. Um, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the issue, Ed, uh, is that, and as George Osborne said, I think this week, that his, his idea was to uh, free up. I mean, what he did with, this, with the, the, the getting rid of the slab versions of stamp duty was, was what we've been asking for for many, many years, I think. I, we didn't have that massive issue of, of over £500,000. A whole lot was then at whatever it was, 6% or whatever it is. So getting rid of the slabs was, I think, a, a good one. And he did make the point, and how do, you, how do we, how do you argue with this, that for 97% of the population, he reduced stamp duty. The issue I think you're, you're, you're explaining here, um, and it, it is an issue, is that there is a log jam now at the top, the top end of the market, which is slowing market, slowing the market all the way down because people can't move up because people at the top end are not selling and not moving up because it's so expensive. The the cost in a market that isn't rising, normally you could look at, look ahead and think, well, you know, in, in a year's time I'll be seven, eight percent more, I'll have recoup my money. But you're you're pretty much seven, eight, ten percent down on the deal the minute you take possession in a market that's not moving. Why would you do that? Yeah, well, I just think that this whole issue of, of, of London producing so much money in the economy, James Pickford, who's a, um, a, a, an FT journalist, did a piece about mm. two years ago where he talked about um, the amount of money that people who buy expensive properties spend in the property market. And he's, he reckoned that someone who spent five million pounds on a property probably spent a million pounds over, over, over a five year period. That's an enormous amount of money, and all of that is now missing from the market. But I don't want to get too stuck. I know a lot of people listening will just think, what are they talking about? Yeah, about? I agree. Yeah. And, and also, we're kidding ourselves that any, any political party is going to change that. <laughs> no, but, but it's, 
still more relevant that an enormous, the, the vast majority of the stamp duty take come take comes from people moving in that top bit of the market. Yeah. And if they stop moving and that starts plunging, they'll be killing the goose. They'll be you know killing the goose that lays the golden egg. You know that old adage. So, so but I do think stamp duty has got more is more of the reason why the London market is collapsing in the centre than than the B word. Um, which hopefully that will all be sort of finished by this time next year. Um, I mean, we've, we've, got a, we've got a load of questions that came in. There's one just coming from someone called Beryl who said, uh, how does Bournemouth, how do Bournemouth viewings compare with the rest of the country? I'm not entirely sure what you're trying to ask there, Beryl, but I mean, you know, from, from a viewer perspective, um, this coincides with one of the questions we had in from a, someone called Malcolm earlier, which says, what does the claim guarantee 24 hours UK coverage mean? Um, it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you, whether you're Bournemouth, John O'Groats, Lands End, Truro, Penzance, wherever it is. We guarantee to do a viewing anywhere in the UK within 24 hours. So uh, obviously with our with the volumes we're doing uh, of viewings at View, but we've now done, you know, whatever it is, approaching 30, 35,000 of them. But they're all over the place at the moment. We don't, you know, I think after we've been going for two or three more years, we'll begin to get some, some much better stats as to how... Um, how the agents in the individual areas are happy to think about uh, outsourcing their viewings, number one. Number two, uh, I think Bournemouth is a very busy area. Mm. Uh, I mean, I think, am I right in thinking, I think Sandbanks is the second most expensive area in the UK, isn't it? Yeah, uh, but the, but that's not, the, the volume is really what, where where most people are, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's that, that's true. I mean, you know, but but certainly Bournemouth is a very, um, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's an important area for us, as, as, as they all are. Um, but the guaranteed 24 hour coverage thing for us is, uh, you know, for anybody who's listening, who is a potential, you know, a potential user of Uber as a customer, i.e. wanting to use some of our viewers to go and do viewings. Um, our guarantee is that we'll do a viewing anywhere in the UK with 24 hours notice, simple as that. So, uh, and and we've had some pretty severe tests and we've got some great viewers. I mean, I know there are quite a few viewers uh, will be logging on and certainly some of them have, have asked a lot of questions. Uh, but I'm keen to move on because I'm aware, Pete, we've only got you for another few minutes. So just, just in case there's anything here that would be um, useful for you to see or to answer, um, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to make sure we use you as much as possible. Um, one here that says, how can you assure me that your viewers will represent my company in a professional manner? Um, I mean, for the viewers who are listening to this, they will know that that. Uh, part of what we do is to is, is to ask you to to turn up at viewings looking as you'd expect or want someone to turn up if they were doing a viewing on your own place. That goes without saying. Um, the fact is that the um, our viewers are rated. Um, in other words, if there's a problem on the viewing, so if the person who's turned up then rings up the agent and say, who on earth was that that was showing me around? You know, we don't, those sort of people we don't want working for us. So if we get feedback like that, then we're obviously not going to be continuing to use those viewers to do more work. It's very important from our point of view. Um, but I'm actually saying, Ed, before it gets to that stage, they are vetted and looked at because that is a real, as a business owner, when I was a business owner, it would be absolutely crucial for me that I didn't get some fool turning up. And as a, I, I know they don't turn up and say, hi, I'm from Martian Parsons. They don't, uh, and it's great. But they turn up and say, from Uber. But it, by association, the company is 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 sort of employing that person on that particular day to show that particular property. So yes. it's really vital that they are uh, they are you know looking and 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 sounding the part and and not being overly salesy. And I think we 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 ask them not to be. Um, and it's just it's just just a viewing service, isn't it? Well, it's very interesting that we've just completed a survey, which will be will be showing the results to people at the beginning of September. Unfortunately, it's August, so there's not a lot of point in doing them now. But we'll be releasing them as part of our two year anniversary thing in September, which shows that the vast majority of people who go to viewings really like the fact that they're, and it's it's a huge percentage. It's over 70 percent say they prefer the fact that it's yeah. not someone trying to sell them the property. Yeah. They really like being shown around by somebody local. So. Um, but just to go back to answer a couple of your earlier points you were making there, Peter, I mean, our, our viewers, when they go along, they don't say they're from the agency because we don't want them to pretend they're from the agency. Yeah. They go along and say that they are that they, that they they have been given the, the name of the person they're meeting and the person who's coming along to meet them, i.e. the viewer, the person who's coming along to, to view the property, is given the name of the viewer 
and the telephone number. So if they're going to be late or there's any problem, they can call. So that's all people want. They want to make sure, you know, we need our viewer to say, are you so-and-so? And we need the person who's coming to say, are you so-and-so? So that's a fairly safe and secure point, you know, that 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 works perfectly well. And um, in terms of representing the companies whose properties they're showing, they know about the properties because the same viewer tends to do the same showing on the same properties. So the same viewer will show, show the same property over and over again, so they get to know them. Um, and secondly, before they go on their first viewing, they will always get a copy of the, the brochure via the URL. So in the booking form, the estate agent can just put in the URL of the property so they can go, the viewer can go to the website and have a quick look at the property before they go around for the first time. And the other thing, of course, is that because they're local, they know the area. Yeah. probably as well if not better than the estate agent so actually uh, in in terms of representing it's not something that we tend to have a problem with so i hope that answers that question um uh, the next question from stephen how does your how do your open houses work and is there a set time you can host one for well uh, i mean peter you did quite you you used to travel quite a lot with your job i mean isn't that really how the australian market works almost sure. exclusively yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they genuinely don't do private treaty sales. I mean, like in 5% of the occasions, so they'll have an open house. And open houses are so valuable. I mean, I I, um, I did travel a lot to Australia, and, and I talked at a few conferences out there, and they could not believe we didn't do auctions. It was just amazing to them. The first thing they do on an open house is that they have people suited and booted, literally taking names, phone numbers, email addresses, and, 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 and addresses, obviously. And it is a fantastic marketing tool for them. Because frankly, you've got nosy neighbors, you've got people that are, are really interested, you've got people that might be interested but haven't sold. I mean, there is a, a multitude of things. So um, you have to have a number of people there if you're expecting a, a few people. So just to have uh, either a viewer or two doing viewings and, and, and someone from your agency standing on the door collecting email addresses and phone numbers is just a is a must I think if you want to do it that way well I think it's increasingly certainly a view but we get we are getting an increasingly large number of people booking open houses um, the open houses can be for an hour two hours all day doesn't matter we you know viewers can be booked on that basis so it's very um, uh, it's becoming more and more, it's clearly becoming more and more a part of the agency way of doing things. Now, from our point of view at Vuba, one of the best uses of open houses are weekends. The yeah. entire raison d'etre for Vuba is to try and enable estate agents to, um, to uh, open up periods that they wouldn't normally work in. So this issue of having an, an open house on a Sunday afternoon at three o'clock, is fantastic both for agents to be able to advertise that fact to their customers to say you can come along and what a lot of people are doing now is booking a couple of viewing slots so they will say right we're going to have an open house at, on tuesday afternoon at six o'clock tuesday evening at six o'clock um and we'll have one on on sunday afternoon at three o'clock and they so they simply put all the viewers into those two slots um you know for us to do an hour costs 40 pounds plus VAT to send the viewer along um the viewers obviously really like it um, because they get to uh, to earn a little bit more money for going out of the front door and, and going and sitting for an hour rather than just doing one appointment. Um, and for the agents, it makes enormous sense because they can get several people around to see the place in one go. So it's, so it's good value. I always used to love it. I mean, some estate agents don't like the idea of there being more than one person. But I used to love it right. because they almost compete. You know, people would feel, oh, hang on a minute, there's someone else interested. And, you know, one of the lines that estate agents will use is, oh, well, actually any salesman uses, oh, well, do you want to buy it because there's someone else that's interested? Well, if you've got three or four people looking around, you know there are three or four other people interested. Yeah. So, so open yeah. house is definitely becoming uh, much more. Um, and especially for lettings as well, I think, Ed. Is that right, you said? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, well, particularly lettings because lettings yeah. is a much faster moving business. But, um, you know, for our viewers watching, um, you know, open houses are a much better way of earning a bit of extra money. And actually, a lot of our appointments are now going towards um, open houses yeah. so uh, that works quite well um, a lady here has asked how do I work with Vuba to ensure I can Vanessa sorry a lady Vanessa uh, <laughs> how do I work with Vuba to ensure I can still close deals um, great question uh, well, it is a really good question actually and and I think what I would say to the estate agents who are watching, uh, what happens when uh, one of our viewers goes into view a property or to show a property is that when they come out, they are expected and they're rated by you, the estate agent, on the feedback they give instantly 
straight afterwards from either the viewing or the open house. If it's an open house, you'll instantly get details of who turned up, what they said. And if it's a single viewing, you'll similarly get feedback immediately on that viewing. Now, that's your best way of closing a deal. How cool is this? On a Sunday, when you'd normally be closed, you wouldn't be making any money. A viewer goes in to do an appointment. You get instant feedback straight to your email telling, them, telling you who's attended and what they want. You ring them back on that Sunday to say, how did it go? Did you like it? How cool is that going to look? I'm sorry. That is just going to look spectacularly. That is a service level way and above what estate agents normally give. So I think we really give the agents the opportunity to do something which is so far and above what they've been doing already. And I think a lot of agents perhaps misunderstand that about Uber. Um, as a viewer, we don't expect you to close deals. That's not what we want viewers to do. We don't want viewers to go in and try and sell. We, we pay viewers for turning up, being a nice vanilla service to say, right, we're opening the door. If you've got any questions, we can add those to our feedback. Uh, if they're difficult questions, please talk to the estate agent. We're just here to make sure you can get in. We don't want people suddenly trying to become estate agents. It's not, it's not what, if you want to become an estate agent, go and be an estate agent. It's not, I don't mean that rudely, but, you know, with, with you, we, we, we just want really nice, sensible people opening doors and being, being you know, just, just doing a good, simple job, uh, a low, complex job. Um, and we don't want that to go too much further, really. So so that's what I'd say from that point of view. Um, I hope that's not too um, too uh, too difficult for people to understand. Uh, just one, on one thing on that, Ed, can I, can I add something? You said um, uh, the Sunday thing, which I think you're, you're right. It is really cool. And you then went on to say it's not what estate agents do. It's not what estate agents do in this country. It is absolutely what estate agents do in America and Australia. Absolutely. They are well, seven well, Sundays as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they will be calling around. Uh, they won't work seven days a week. Uh, and your guys shouldn't work seven days a week, the people watching, uh, because you'll lose them. Um, but they, they will work some on, some off. So if we can make use of a viewer, so you absolutely can make that call on a Sunday at four o'clock, them seeing it, having seen it at three o'clock. You're not going to the office. You're not sitting around waiting for people to turn up or not. You are literally making a call to impress someone that you are red hot. And that is how the industry has got to go to make a difference. Because if we don't make a difference, then your fees will slide and you will just be like all the rest. You'll use the word vanilla. You will be a vanilla service like all the rest. So to step out of that, you've got to think out of the box. Yeah, well, I like to think we can really help people do that. That's that's yeah. the reason I started Viewer Up, and it's 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 what it's all about is is trying yeah. to help people do more. Um, interestingly, um, I don't know whether he's watching. I suspect not. But Stephen Hurd, a guy from my London home, perfectly happy for me to talk about it. Uh, very smart, central London, not central London, London wide operation. He runs yeah. he runs his agency all over London from one office in Westminster. Um, he spent over a, about a, a six week period. He spent two and a two thousand six hundred pounds with us. He reckons he made £25,000 out of that. That's just one example of where people are getting significant returns on investment by using the service. So it's, it's not just about appearing to give a service, it's about making more money. Yeah. It's about making more money. And ultimately, the viewers who are watching are, uh, are wanting to be viewers because they like the idea of earning a bit of extra money. And for the customers, the potential customers, the potential agents who are watching, it's all about making more money as well. So it's all about using a service which we've, launch to for everyone to make it's, it's sort of win-win yeah so but I also that... for, view, for viewers i mean I, I i often say i became an estate agent because i'm nosy and i love looking around people's houses i think it's fascinating i think it's wonderful i think it's brilliant it is a great job for estate agents and viewers now viewers obviously aren't the estate agent bit but they do have the ability uh, to go look around people's houses which is just fab uh, and the estate agents has has the ability to to close the deal well whilst not looking around people's houses the whole time uh, and getting out of the office, so I think it, you know, it's a win-win. Um, I remember, I think, I think I might have mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when we were talking. But the, for those of you who haven't heard it, I remember when I first came up with the idea for Viewer. I was talking to Anne Ashworth, who's the editor of Bricks and Mortar, um, deputy editor at the Times. She said, uh, "This is uh, well, how did she put it? She said um, everyone in this country thinks they're better than their estate agent. This is their chance to prove it." <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> she, I don't think she realised that there wouldn't be much selling going on, but actually. Um, you know, properties tend to sell themselves. I think a lot of people think the estate agents make a huge amount of difference when they're showing the property. But obviously, the reason that a lot of estate agents like to meet people at properties is because they want to get information from them. You know, these days, estate agents often can't survive by just the fees they're earning. You know, they, they will know who the good mortgage suppliers are. They will know who the good solicitors in the area are. And they make a bit of extra money out of these sort of referrals. So a lot of estate agents 
prefer to meet somebody themselves for the first time because they can get this information out of them uh, and find out whether they need a solicitor or a mortgage. But my reasoning these days is that really that sort of information should be being found out before they go along to the property. Certainly, as Peter, as you and I know, we've seen a couple of estate agents uh, who are actually thinking about using Vuba uh, for their first viewings. So these are out of London agents who often send their, their people for an hour, two hours to meet somebody who could be a tire kicker. So the idea that a viewer would do the first viewing to check whether or not they're, you know, and then you'd know, then no one buys a property on their first visit. The, 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 the serious visit is the second visit. If someone says, I want a second viewing, you know they're serious. And that's the stage when this very big, very well known national agent said they were seriously thinking about sending one of their partners or estate agents along. So it's 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 fascinating how that is 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 changing to some extent. Um, you mentioned there, Ed, that the the agent is um, doesn't make much difference on a viewing, and I'd agree with that. In fact, I used to train uh, my agents to basically shut up on a viewing. I think there's nothing worse than someone rabbiting in your ear, pointing out the bleeding obvious as you walk around the house. So, you, what I love about uh, the, the idea of a viewer is it's non-threatening. And, and we, you mentioned earlier, people like having a non-threatening person. If it's a non-threatening person, neither the owner, which I think is a disaster person, the owner showing the house, uh, or, or the agent who has got, let's face it, they've got, they've got an axe to grind, but just a, a, a completely sort of sterile person, really. Just opening the, it, It's almost you've got a spy in the camp, and they will, tell, they will say out loud what they like or don't like, and therefore that feedback back to the agent from the viewer is really valuable stuff, because it's real true stuff as opposed to stuff I mean how many houses have you sold or, or seen and the guy says I love this house in front of the owner I love it I think it's so lovely thank you so much for showing me and we get outside and they say that was horrible and and the owner calls back half an hour later saying they loved it when are they when are they going to make an offer and you have to gently let them down <laughs> because that's how it works but with a spy in the camp my God, you're going to get some real information. Yeah, no, 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 that's a, that, that's a very good point. And, and for those who weren't attending, who weren't listening early, maybe we have got a survey we're releasing. We've done a survey of 250 qualified people who bought properties. Um, it's by a survey monkey. It's, it's, a, it's, a, we, it's a completely above board trial, but it's been absolutely fascinating, the responses in terms of how uh, viewers, people looking at properties to buy or to let, really prefer not having somebody who's trying to sell the property to them. They really yep. prefer the idea of having someone neutral showing it. Be, it, be it the owner or the agent. You know, I've always known like you that the agent is the wrong person to, to be around because they just say the wrong things. <laughs> they just do the say The owners, things. you mean? The owners always yeah. say the wrong things. Yeah. Um, we got a question here from Rizal, which says, um, hope you're both well, thank you very much. Uh, will you be developing an app in the future? The answer is that an app has already been developed. The problem that, like any tech company that's that, that's growing fast, we have a, a front end that needs to be lightened up on our tech stack. Um, we have a very, very good APIs and a very good back end, uh, which will enable the, the app to work. But in order to get it absolutely right um, and to deliver push notifications, all the things that we want it to do, we could we could produce an inferior uh, product tomorrow, but we don't want to do that. We want to get it right. So yeah. our, our mobile site is extremely uh, responsive and feedback, booking forms, everything else can be done via tablet, app, um, PC, whatever. So at the moment, we don't that, that's not the top of our list. But it is certainly going to be there very, very close. We have made the mistake once or twice in the past of saying the app will be out in the next two or three months. But unfortunately, it's just it's not practical for us to say yes now to that because it's it, it obviously needs to be done. Um, if you're a viewer and you want to get the work guaranteed, push notifications are useful because, of course, the app comes, the push comes, the notification comes straight up on your phone. If you're a viewer and you're always worried, you're often worried about not getting the work first. Just make sure that you set up the, the email address that you get your requests from as a favorite, because it will then pop up as a, as a notification on your phone. Hmm. Um, and you'll be able to see it very quickly. You won't have to wait till you keep logging in. You'll see it pop up and, and, uh, and that'll make life easier. So I hope that answers your question, Rizal, in terms of, um, in, in terms of the app. Um, a very good question here from Dennis. Uh, Peter, I know you're going to have to go in a minute. So I'm going to go quite soon. Let's yeah. one for the um, so we've got Dennis here says, is it safe to make a purchasing decision 
uh, based on a viewer's report. We have used viewer for the first time to report on a property we are interested in purchasing, or is it caveat emptor? That's a very good question, um, Dennis. I mean, obviously, what what viewer can or what viewers can do in their area is very much to give you a second pair of objective eyes. For instance, um, if you're looking at a property and it says this, 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 and this, and of course, if it's an estate agent's job is to make the property sound as great as possible. Um, the um, the various laws out there in terms of um, consumer protection mean that estate agents can't lie, but occasionally there can be a little bit of omission, I would suggest politely in terms of- Kill the lily. Yeah, and, and so caveat emptor will always apply, but to have an objective uh, person go in and ask, who has been asked some specific questions about a property. So, you know, can you please go, you know, is the road noisy? Is it busy? Uh, while you were there, were there any dogs barking? Um, you know, are there any noises that you were aware of that you, you can ask a lot of sensible questions? And I'm sure, Dennis, if you're asking a viewer to go along and look at a property, you have some specific concerns about that property. You can learn a lot these days from Google Earth and Street, Street View and all this sort of stuff. But nothing beats having boots on the ground and actually being able to see. I mean, there are other industries that we've been talking to about first views, the insurance industry, taking pictures for, for people early on in claims. Um, this sort of thing can, can often be very, very, uh, I would suggest that, for instance, looking at cars, you know, if you're thinking of buying a car in Hull and you live in London, wouldn't you want someone just to pop around for 30 quid just to check the car is actually in the condition they say it is? There are lots of things that a, that a third party person can do which would make you feel a bit safer. So uh, my your question, Dennis, said, is it safe to make a purchasing decision, purchasing decision based on a viewer's report? My answer to that would be no. It's cap it, 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 it yeah. is caveat emptor, but I think it's going to put you in a significantly better position to make an offer. I think that's, that's, that's what I would say. If you're completely unable to get to the property yourself. Um, interestingly, for our viewers to hear and perhaps one or two of the people listening, um, quite a, the, one of the fastest growing areas of viewers business is people who find us from overseas who want to invest in properties in the UK. And this may be you, Dennis, for all I know, uh, who, want to, who are from overseas who want to invest in the UK, who find us via Google. Mm -hmm. because this is a unique service. It's a brand new service. People didn't really know what to do. If you were... Um, thinking of looking at a property in the UK, what would you do? Employ a local agent to go and look at it? You, you could do that. Um, but that agent may have an axe to grind in some ways. You never quite know that. But to get a just a straightforward, I won't use the expression that Peter used, sterile earlier, because I'm sure our viewers are all very big. <laughs> Nevertheless, someone, Sorry, who, someone who is objective and local to go around yeah. and, you know, they'll know about the area. So I think it's a really useful extra. But no, I wouldn't base a purchasing decision on it. No, Ed, can I add one thing to that? At, at Foxons and Marsh and Parsons, we, I won't say often, but we uh, a number of times a year let a property, sight unseen, via our website. Uh, we used to have 360 tours and lovely photographs and floor plans. But frankly, your, your point about the road. So for letting, I think, um, to for, for someone who is relocating to Hull, for instance, or to London from Hull, um, to go and have a viewer. Can viewers take videos? Yes. Yeah, great. Well, to take a video of, of the outlook from the main, you know, the, the sitting room or the main bedroom or the noise thing, I think would be absolutely fantastic before you decide to actually go and see it. Because frankly, you're not going to buy something without, without buy something. You could let something, definitely, without seeing it from a viewer who takes a video of, of the area. But to buy something, you'll always do. But if you have to travel from London to Hull or Hull to London and you get there and it's absolutely not what you want for 30 quid, that is a that is a bit of gold. Yeah. Well, I, I rather agree with that. Um, okay, another question. I mean, I'm dealing with some of these as they come in and some of them that arrived earlier. Susie asked, how have other clients implemented viewer services alongside their existing setup? I think the best way I can characterize that for those that have, have, have um, implemented, um, uh, use the viewer services, that really they use us for out of hours. They use us for um, it, it, almost as a as a default weekend solution. I mean, at Douglas and Gordon, we used to have weekend staff, <clears throat> and I know you used to do it differently, Peter. You used to have weekend staff running the offices so the negs could get out and do the viewings. We used to do the other way around. We used to have someone from the staff in the office and 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 the weekend staff out doing the viewings. 
So I think the best way I can characterize it is to say that we use, uh, is that our customers tend to use us, uh, use us as weekend stock. Um, we do have our API published. So actually one or two customers do uh, have people who can book viewings direct through to us um, via their own native apps or via their own websites. Um, so uh, some, of, some have implemented what we do automatically and directly. But the nice thing about what Viewer does is, of course, that it's a human, you know, it's a human process. You cannot take out uh, the human nature of what this is. So meeting somebody to go and look at a property is very much um, a, a human um, uh, part of the process. And you yeah. can't order it. So, um, Peter, Wait. I can see you. You're okay. so, <laughs> getting the look from my wife, so I've got to go. OK, well, so thank you very much for taking part again, Peter. Um, for those who don't know, you know, Peter, Peter is an, an investor and a non-exec at Douglas and Gordon, at Douglas and Gordon, at uh, <laughs> very, 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 very <laughs> I wish we had been at Douglas and Gordon. Um, but it's really, it's, I, I can't um, emphasize how good it is to have Peter on board and to have his extra now. So uh, thank you very much for your contribution. We'll speak again. Uh, for the rest of you, I'm very much staying here for a little bit if you have any more questions. Um, and I was just going to answer some of the questions that people have put up earlier on. So uh, don't all disappear just because Peter's gone. <laughs> um, an, an interesting question here from a guy called Graham says, um, uh, would Viber work with an estate agent in more rural areas? When would we use the service? I mean, the service works anywhere and it doesn't matter how rural it is. So it, it really doesn't make any difference where it is. Some of the customers we've got, particularly one or two of the big auction companies, wanted to test us before they used our service. So they said, um, uh, can we give you three properties in extraordinary locations and see whether you can service them? And one gave us a property north of uh, north of uh, Inverness, about an hour north of Inverness. Another one gave us one in the middle of Wales. Another one, another one gave us just inland, somewhere just inland from Truro, which was not a problem because you wonderful viewers are everywhere. We have thousands of you all over the place. Um, when it says, uh, when would we use this service? So the agent here is asking, when would we use the service? Well, again, exactly the same caveats apply. Um, if it's a, you know, we have one fantastic customer, a company called Charts Edge, a fellow called Miles Kevin, who lives down in, um, this is down in Devon. He's been one of our customers from the very start. And he's a one office operation, but he covers the whole of Devon and Cornwall. Well, how could you do that unless you were using View? But you can't send your people off for hours on end to go and do a viewing with someone. So it completely revolutionizes estate agents' ability to cover more ground. That's it, period. So when you say, when would, you, when would we use the service? I would like to see it being used as much as possible, but we are not trying to replace what the agents do. There is a, a need for the estate agents. They understand their businesses. They're the ones that are getting the offers out of people. They know how to do that. They're salespeople. What viewers do is just to be polite, open the door, let people do what they want to do when they want to do it. And that's the bit that's missing at the moment in the estate agency industry is that there are so many people that want to see things at weekends. And they've sort of given up asking because they know they're not going to be able to do it. Um, and it must be very, very frustrating for people. So. Um, OK, moving on, we've got some questions here, uh, one or two questions that are coming from viewers. So uh, if there are any viewers there who want to ask any questions, I mean, Peter's gone. Uh, I'm happy to stay here till seven o'clock, but in the absence of more questions coming in, I've got sort of two or three here more to ask. Uh, so let's get through these and then see how we're going. OK, um, how does a viewer receive the money that they earn? Uh, well, we try to pay weekly. Um, I'll probably get a kick from someone, but it's at the very least monthly. But I think we try and pay our viewers weekly. Um, obviously, the reason our viewers do the work is because they like earning a bit of extra money. So it's important to get that money and not have to wait three months to get it so so we pay normally i think it is weekly so uh, that money goes through very quickly and obviously part of the the uh, vetting procedure is that we get your bank details and if you have a bank account in your own name you know these days the bank do a lot of uh, know your client kyc stuff so we're obviously going to have to pay you and we do pay directly into your bank account um talking of the vetting procedure someone did ask earlier about whether the enhanced vetting procedure has created some issues with with viewers. Um, the reason that we've asked for an enhanced vetting uh, of the viewers or for, for, for you guys to submit to a bit of enhanced vetting is that uh, it's what our customers have asked. Our customers want certain things done to, to make sure that the viewers are uh, not only who they say they are, but are fully accountable 
And I think you will understand because the quality of our service, and we've always made quality our byword. I mean, you know, we, we have a fantastic ops team. And uh, a lot of our customers come back to us and say they love us, not because things go well, but because of the way we treat them when things don't go well. So if someone's unlucky enough to lose a set of keys or whatever it is, we will send, we will immediately get the keys, we'll, you know, change the lock to get it replaced, we'll do whatever it takes to make sure the customer's happy. But the enhanced vetting procedure is really not really that much more trouble to submit to a to a straightforward video. It's it's a one-way video interview. You click on a link, you have three or four chances to answer a few simple few simple questions. That's just one example. Um, if you're asked if you want to hold keys, um, we ask you to do a disbarring service check, a, a, a DBS check, which is what used to be called the Criminal Records Bureau check. Very straightforward. Uh, nothing too complicated and it will enable you to do jobs as key holders well key holders are guaranteed work because once you're the holder of a key you're going to be doing the viewings on a certain property and for some rural properties and some properties that are well out of the way key holders are the only option we have so the enhanced vetting procedure um has cold is the wrong word but but you know we, we we've lost a number of viewers mainly because those people haven't yet responded they haven't responded to requests to have more, more uh, just this extra level of, of vetting done. So the reason we're doing it is because, uh, because our customers have asked us to do it. And we think it's a perf perfectly reasonable request from an, from an organization like Viber that is offering quality. That's what we offer is quality. So when you're working for Viber, it is all about uh, being seen. And we think it will be to be seen as as, as working for the best company in this in this area and that's what we want to be doing um, Greg asks are you currently looking for agents in North Wales we're always looking for people I mean I think that that any of you viewers who are thinking of, of, of applying or indeed are watching this and thinking why, why aren't I getting more work I, I have to remind you the business is only two years old we are now growing at about 10 to 15 percent per month but in terms of our percentage of the market we still have well under single figure percentage of the viewings that are out there it's a tiny percentage but we are growing very fast so this is not a job as a viewer or not a, a calling as a viewer that you would do because you it's going to be your principal source of income it never is going to be your principal source of income it's about earning a bit of extra money about enjoying the work being able to take it when you want to take it you know if you get a request that comes in that says you do what you don't we're not relying on you and what happens is that a few minutes later that request will then go to the next nearest viewer and then the next nearest viewer uh, our customers expect a quick response to know that their viewing has been booked so we can't send a, a request out and then leave it with you for an hour to make your mind up whether you want to do it or not. unfortunately we don't have that luxury we just don't have that luxury the business is it, you know we're in a fast moving industry and so therefore i know it's a real bore for some of you particularly the viewers listening not to be able to get a job because just because you don't accept it straight away but again our business is driven by the demand for the business if the demand is that we need enhanced viewers and quick answers to to requests for viewings i'm afraid we have to go along with what our customers want or we don't have a business so of course you have the option as viewers not not to accept that and to not accept the work the whole point is you don't have to take the work if you don't want it um and, and you can wait till the next time it comes up um uh, uh victor has asked a viewer question said uh, how does the booking process work would i need to tell you when i'm available each week actually victor it works the opposite way around we ask you to tell us when you're not available so if you're away on holiday, uh, going away, we just ask you to block out periods so that the software knows not to send you a request while you're away, which I think you'd agree is pretty straightforward. Um, one or two uh, companies who do something similar to what we do, not in the property area, they tend to make agents diary. They, make, they, they tend to make you, the viewers, diaries available. Um, they don't use it with viewers, actually. They use contractors. They use people, um, people who they, who are, sort of semi-employed but um, the customer books straight into people's diaries and whilst that sounds lovely in principle the, the what we have found from some of our competitors who use the service in other areas booking these in people's diaries the people who have the diaries tend to block out much more of their diaries i you know they you can't just book a 
book it straight into someone's diary because there are big bits of it blocked out so that doesn't work but also when people book things straight into people's diaries they forget and they don't turn up and our watchword our byword at, at, at uh, Libra is quality it's about doing what we say we're going to you know when we say to a customer we guarantee to do a viewing anywhere in, within the UK in 24 hours we really mean it and if we haven't got a viewer within 10 miles or who says they can do it our ops team will go to work to find somebody who will and that person once we found them will then be a friend for life they love doing the work in the area so so um i'm also aware that for a lot of you um saying uh how busy will i be and you know is there going to be a lot of work obviously as time goes on it's like it's like our business in our with our ops girls or our ops staff they happen to be all girls our ops staff um, and our and the customer service management team we've employed more people than we need because we know that the business is growing and it'll grow into that capacity in terms it's the same with viewers in in certain areas there may be too many viewers in a certain area so you won't get all the work in that area but as we get busier and busier and busier uh, we are planning, by the way, at some point of introducing some sort of ambassador program or some sort of ability for, for our viewers to to talk to estate agents in the area, persuade them to use Viewer and be financially rewarded as a result of that. Um, if you think that's something you'd like to do, do um, do email the client support team or whoever your normal contact is at Viewer to say that you'd like to do that, because we'll certainly take your name. And when we do start that up, we'll come back to you because it seems obvious to me that for you guys to be able to go and get work in your areas from the agents that you that you walk past every day makes perfect sense. Um, the reason our viewers love doing that, or a lot of our viewers say tell us they love doing the work, is because it's varied. They do it for lots of different estate agents. Sure, anyone watching this could go and be a weekend viewer for for their local estate agent. But you're only going to get work from one company, and it's not um, work when you want it. You know, not be able to pick and choose when you want it. So there are certainly options. Um, Okay, well, that's all the questions that we've been asked to date. Um, and uh, unless anybody has got anything else they want to add, as I'm sure you're aware, you can go in and ask questions here now. Oh, here we go. It's always the last 15 minutes, isn't it? Um, um, I mean, there's a, a, a um, Topi here is asking a question. I need to know more about, about Viewer in terms of viewing properties on my behalf. Honestly, best way is to is to contact the team at Viewer. Um, they will run you through how it works. But effectively, you just get a straightforward booking form. Once you've registered, I would go to the website. I go to uh, viewer.co.uk. Uh, register yourself on there. You can register as a private landlord, as an investor, however you want to register. Uh, put your details in there, and one of the team, uh, Michael Rowena Kate, someone will call you straight back, and they'll tell you all you need to know. Uh, once you've registered on the site, you will then be able to see the price lists and all this sort of thing. So, um, and the service level agreements, everything that we we commit to. So, I hope that answers your question. Um, register, and then someone will be in touch straight away. Um, so, I think on the basis that we've really only got about ten minutes left anyway, um, I'll give you sort of thirty seconds or so to ask any more questions if you want to now. Um, but I think that's been quite a lot. I'm, I'm really grateful that Peter joined us and I'm really grateful to all of you guys for taking the trouble to come and listen. We are going to do this regularly. We certainly won't be doing them every three weeks. I think that was probably a bit too soon. But um, we will be looking to give you opportunities to, to talk to us, to ask us questions uh, regularly, maybe, maybe, maybe once a month, maybe once every two months, but we will definitely continue to do this. And if you have any feedback, um on the webinars whether you like them whether you think they're a complete waste of time or whatever equally do let us know but um i think uh, on the basis that no one else is asking a question and i think we've covered most of what we need to cover uh if you're an agent remember we're an out of hours service here to help you um and if you're a viewer uh, don't expect it to be making your living completely and if you're asked for an enhanced, if you're asked to do the enhanced, we'd really love it if you would, please. Uh, if you're watching, the enhanced viewing is not particularly onerous. It's not difficult, but it's what our customers want. So, so uh, yeah, I'm going to sign off there and I'm going to say thank you very much for listening. And um, yeah, if you have any issues, do please get in touch. Register at the website or info at viewer.co.uk. Thank you very much.